Since some of our older videos are in our classier format, we've updated the commentary with some ad libs and karaoke sessions by yours truly that we know your little messy self is gonna love. Uh oh, girl, let me get ready. <clears throat> Of course, if you prefer our previous format, then you're more than welcome to watch the old video, which we've linked in our description box. Bye, Ashy. But for the rest of y'all, are you ready to jump into this HSM? Hot, stinking mess. I'm ready, girl. <laughs> I'm ready, girl. Before we dive deep into other people's business, don't forget to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, blue raspberry licorice, RRG coffee mugs, and gummy sour bears. That sounds good as hell. On May 13, 1950, Stevie Wonder was born prematurely in Saginaw, Michigan. He told Oprah Winfrey he was placed in an incubator and his doctor made an irreversible mistake. Stevie said, I was given too much oxygen and an area of my eyes was destroyed. His retinas detached, leading to Stevie losing his eyesight. Despite his disability, the Independent reports he sang in the church choir, learned to play the piano at the age of seven, taught himself to play the harmonica, drums, and bass, and had no shortage of women lining up to date him. Say what now? He told Oprah Winfrey that as a child, one of his favorite songs to sing was Smokey Robinson and the Miracle Song, Then I'll Try Something New. Stevie said, When I'd sing that song, the girls would come around and my heart would beat fast. Although he couldn't see the girls, he said he could feel the way they were really into him. After getting signed to Motown's Tamla label, his natural charisma made him popular with girls, too. As of this video, he has fathered nine children with five women. I know you're lying. Baby, his eyesight might not be the best, but the dangalang is still dangalangin'. <laughs> According to singer Betty Levette's memoir called A Woman Like Me, which we've linked in our description box, she and some other singers in the Detroit music scene decided to throw Stevie a party for his 16th birthday. Their objective was to turn Stevie into a man. Oh, this is getting messy. Stevie's deflowering party took place in Betty's basement apartment. She wrote that she was the first one approached to do the honors, but she suggested her friend Marie Early should take Stevie to Pound Town, since she would make the experience more unforgettable. When Marie failed to show up to the party, Stevie's happiness turned to sadness. Aww. Lacking the ability to see, Stevie relied on his other senses to help him pinpoint the most beautiful woman in a room. He once told Page Six, I know a lady of the world when I'm around her, so I really don't need anyone to tell me she's the one or she's not. Okay, Stevie. As his career began to heat up, he was hounded by groupies. However, Stevie told Jet Magazine it became much easier for him to identify the satin dolls. The what a what? Satin dolls is a term coined by Stevie's idol, Duke Ellington. He described a satin doll as a woman who is as pretty on the outside as she is on the inside. Oh, okay. That sounds like me. <laughs> Stevie said he would judge his conversations with women. A good sense of humor and a great personality were two things that would win him over. However, sometimes knowing a woman had a nice body was all it took. Mm just like a ninja with sight, okay? One former girlfriend told the New York Post she was sitting in front of Stevie at church when the guys he was with told him, wow, she's got a nice butt and a face to match. And that was Stevie's cue to spit some game. The woman told the publication he tapped her on the shoulder and asked what brought her to church. Uh, Jesus? She told him she attended the service every Sunday because she believed in God. She said Stevie responded that he could give her all the things God had promised to give her. Stevie need his ass beat. <laughs> Another woman confirmed she met Stevie in church as well. That was his spot, wasn't it? He would stay late just to impress her and eventually stole her heart by giving her piano lessons and turning gospel songs into love songs. The woman said, he changed the words and insert my name and his name in there. Stevie got game, y'all. <laughs> Take notes, fellas. The woman said Stevie laid it on thick 
by suggesting baby names for them and promising to buy her the most fabulous houses. Stevie's mom, Lula Mae Hardaway, gave more insight into his dating ritual prior to her 2006 passing. Lula said before attending an event, Stevie would choose the woman to flirt with. On one occasion, he chose his Motown label mate, Diana Ross. Stevie reportedly asked someone to tell him what color dress Diana was wearing. And then he was led over to her and showered her with compliments like, I love that red dress. Ninja, how you know? Stevie soon learned Diana was off limits because she was hooking up with Motown founder, Barry Gordy. Levi Stubbs of the Four Tops stated, Stevie flirted, but when it came to Diana, we had to let him know that she was the boss's woman and the boss doesn't play. Sit your ass down, Stevie. He struck up a friendship with Sarita Wright, the receptionist at Motown's Detroit office, who also doubled as a background and demo singer. 18-year-old Stevie and 22-year-old Sarita's friendship eventually turned romantic. Here we go. A source told Page Six that Stevie was so taken by her because she was fresh. What the hell that mean? He could reportedly sense her sexiness just by touching the sleeves of her blouse. Stevie told the publication, A lady that wears an expensive top is not loud when she speaks and smells good. That's how I know. <laughs> okay. They tied the knot, and after 18 months, their marriage was over. Grand opening? Grand closing. Although their relationship didn't last, they remained friends and continued working on music together. Sadly, Sarita died of complications from breast and bone cancer in 2004 at the age of 58. In a 1973 interview with Rolling Stone, Stevie hinted he had a new person in his life, whom he described as his lady friend. Many assumed the woman he was referring to was his secretary and bookkeeper, Yolanda Simmons. When the interviewer asked what their life was like in the bedroom, Stevie answered, you just have to get in there and do that, you know. That shit is just fantasticness. Fantasticness? Child. No. He definitely ain't <laughs> blowing Stevie, no backs no. out. He sound corny as hell. Uh -uh. like that. Uh-uh, Stevie, Child. no. <laughs> Rolling Stone reported that Yolanda gave birth to their daughter, Aisha Morris, in February 1975. Stevie told Oprah that one night, the sound of Aisha splashing in the bathtub almost brought him to tears. He said, that was emotion stuck in a moment, and that can never, ever be taken away. The moment inspired him to write one of his most iconic songs. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? That sounds good as hell. <laughs> Okay, y'all, I get caught up, girl, I get caught up. In the sleeve notes of his 1976 album, Songs in the Key of Life, fans found one of many messages from Stevie that read, My mind's heart must be polygamous, and my spirit is married to many, and my love belongs to all. The note was followed by a list of women's first names. <laughs> oh! Mike Cimbello, the guitarist in Stevie's band Wonderland, told biographer Mark Rabowski, Stevie loved Yolanda, but Stevie loved many women. Mike went on to say he assumed Stevie woke up one day and realized you can only have one love during your lifetime, and the love of his life was his ex-wife, Sarita. Say what now? Mike added, that was the thorn in his side. He is petrified of loneliness. So he decided he'd be happy being happy with Yolanda. Mm, you ain't finna just settle for me now. On that note, it's no surprise he and Yolanda never got married. However, she did give birth to their son, Keita Morris, in 1977. Stevie gave what many believed was some insight into their relationship in his 1980 ballad, Lately. In the paranoid lyrics, Stevie sings, <clears throat> Me, 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 me. Just the other night while you were sleeping, I vaguely heard you whisper someone's name. But when I ask you of the thoughts you're keeping, you just say nothing's changed. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. GQ reports Stevie and Yolanda eventually split up in 1982, and it was rumored his reluctance to give up other women led to the breakup. This ninja. Stevie kept busy in the 80s by fathering a son named Mumtaz with Melody McCulley and a son named Kwame with a woman named Cheryl. 
Sources report he also fathered his fifth child, a daughter named Sophia, with an unidentified woman. Even though he was smashing other women's cheeks, his heart reportedly belonged to a woman named Angela McAfee. According to the LA Times, he had been shooting his shot with Angela since 1986, but it wasn't until 1996 that he decided to take things to the next level. Stevie reportedly convinced Angela to quit her job as a wardrobe consultant, and she moved into his LA estate. She said they entered into a verbal agreement with the understanding that Stevie would be the sole income earner and she would be the homemaker. Angela said Stevie asked her to assist him in resolving some of his medical, personal, and family issues. She also reportedly redesigned his residence by adding braille inscriptions to help him move independently. Angela prepared a diet and exercise program to help reduce his blood pressure and claims she rendered a variety of personal services to help him deal with a fungus infection and and hemorrhoid issues. What in yeah. the boo boo is going on here? Yeah. What in the hey. boo boo? What in the hey boo boo? Even though he and Angela were cohabitating, he met freelance art director Kai Millard in 1999 while at a New York nightclub. According to The Telegraph, he had some of his people approach her, but Kai declined his advances because she was at the club for work purposes. Once she turned to walk away, Stevie was standing right behind her. They ended up talking until 5 a.m. Six months later, they got engaged. Now that's a red flag. And in September 2001, Stevie and Kai became husband and wife. But what about his girlfriend, Angela? Well, a month after Stevie and Kai's wedding, Angela filed a $30 million lawsuit claiming she contracted herpes from Stevie one year prior. Damn, damn, yeah. damn. Damn. Angela also claimed Stevie concealed the disease from her. Stevie clapped back in a lawsuit of his own, alleging Angela took $160,000 worth of furniture, stereos, exercise, and musical gear from him after their breakup. That's what she's supposed to do, Stevie. You up and got married on her ass. He also denied the STD allegation. The case was moved to mediation, and the outcome was kept confidential. Stevie and Kai welcomed their son, Kyland, in 2001. And in May 2005, Kai gave birth to Stevie's seventh child, a baby boy named Mandela. The baby's name was a suggestion that came from Nelson Mandela. In a 2010 interview with The Telegraph, Stevie admitted he wanted two more children, preferably twins. Two years later, he filed for divorce after 11 years of marriage. What the hell? He cited irreconcilable differences and signed the divorce papers using two fingerprints instead of a signature. He requested joint custody of their two sons and agreed to pay $25,000 per month in child support. Before their divorce was finalized in October 2015, Stevie had already moved on with Tamika Robin Bracey. Damn, he moved quick, don't he? He should be called Stevie the Flash, not Stevie Wonder. But it is a wonder how fast he moved on. A source told Page Six they met at a gathering and Stevie was captivated by her person. Perfume. What that thing smell like, Stevie? <laughs> when Tamika walked past him, Stevie said he could tell she was light on her feet. And to him, that meant she was most likely a true beauty. Their relationship progressed, and Tamika quietly gave birth to two children. 67-year-old Stevie and 42-year-old Tamika made things official by getting married in July 2017 at Hotel Bel Air. Sources have reported that Stevie wasn't always available for his children, who as of this video range in age from their late 40s to about 8 years old. But as he has gotten older, he has developed closer bonds with all of them. These days, the father of nine and his third wife, Tamika, are living happily in Los Angeles. Through all the ups and downs of his dating history, he has learned one valuable lesson. He told Oprah Winfrey, I am a work in progress, but if I know in my heart that I'm doing my best, that my heart's in the right place, that I have unconditional love, I feel okay. Well, good for you, Stevie. <laughs> good for you, baby. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.